good afternoon, or good evening. You have just tuned in to the Sons to Fathers Nugget, uh, Father's Devotion, Father Time Devotional. Um, the past couple of days we've been talking about a whole lot of different things about um, protecting your kids' identity to protecting them from the wrong type of crowd. Um, and then earlier we talked about, the, f the first one was talked about, we talked about was five things that, five of the biggest things that men fear. So if you wanted to hear those or, uh, or, or want to go back and share those, you can do that. They are now available for you to listen to. So feel free to go back and do that. Um, download the podcast, share it to your social media, um, outlets, like to wherever you have your social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Tumblr, you know, wherever. Just share to share it, download it and share it because you never know. The person that's sitting next to you might actually need to hear uh, these tips that are being given here on this particular podcast. Well, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. This morning, I want to talk about the nine things that parents should never say to their children. Now, this particular um, topic can go a lot, a lot of different ways. Um, but before I get started, my wife's sitting here with me in the studio. I appreciate her coming in to hang out with me and see what we do here on the podcast. So she, I might have her pray later. I don't know. It depends on how comfortable she feels. <laughs> she gives me that look like, no. <laughs> but yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, you know, there's been a as far as Krista and I are concerned, you know, there's been a lot of times where we've wanted to say certain things, but because of we realize the importance of our words and how we, we believe the scripture when it says that we hold the power of life in our tongue, you know, and our words can either kill or give life. And we choose to give life with our words, especially when it comes to our children. Now, one thing we have definitely Main came into agreement on in that we promised our kids that we would never do and I even grew up with this and I believe my wife has grew up with this is that's never call your kids stupid ever don't ever do that it, it does calling them stupid one demoralizes them and two it shames them and three it it destroys their character and their identity and their integrity so that that's a big no no never do that and if you do that even now, please stop because it, 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 you're doing nothing but damaging your child. All right. And when it comes to your kids, your tongue can do a whole lot of damage. Like I just said, if you're not careful, never underestimate the defeating power of a few careless words. So here right now are nine things that you should never, ever say to your kids. And the first one I believe is the, one of the most important. And it has to do with comparison. And that is get this here it is why can't you be more like so-and-so i know growing up when i was a kid i was always compared to my older two sisters or i was compared to my cousins or even now uh, when i was getting back in the church even as a young adult uh just getting back in the church and figuring out my identity in christ i was compared to my brother now granted i love my brother i really do and uh, in fact, I just got off the phone with him, him and I was chit-chatting chit about how the podcast was going. Um, but, you know, those comparisons can destroy a person, make them feel less than what they are. Um, you know, the comparisons that you, whenever you do that and the comparisons that you use, they're very toxic. Um, and they serve no positive purpose at all. Now, comparing your child to their brother, their sister, or friend, it only tears them down. You know, your child can, your child... And, you know, it makes them feel like they're not good enough to measure up to anything, especially your love. So you got to be very, very careful about that. Now, you want to treat, treat each child of yours as an individual. Never say, why can't you do well in school like your brother or your sister? Um, but you can say this. What can we do to help you do your best in school? Now, each of your children are unique. Like I told you before in the last podcast, we have three. And I don't know how many children you have, but each one of your children have a specific and and um, different personality. And they are designed exactly as God has designed them. And they can't be anybody else but themselves. But when you begin to compare them with others, it, it tends to tear them down and make them feel less like they can never amount to anything. 
So it's important to treat them equally and love them all, but understand the difference in their personalities and um, communicate with them thusly. Number two, the no, the next thing you don't want to say is, I don't have time right now. All right. Now, here's just an example. One Saturday morning when my son, Marky, this is a, I heard the story through, from our friend, um, was a little boy. He showed me his ball and gloves and said, Dad, let's play basketball. Let's play baseball. Of course, since Mr. Emily, the family guy said, sure, son, right or wrong. No, I said, I don't have time right now. I'm fixing the toilet. Just give me a few minutes. Well, that minute turned into hours. And when I was, when he was ready that afternoon to play ball, his son said, no, thanks, dad. Now, when we say things like, I don't have time right now, let me get to it. Be intentional about getting back and doing that thing. Because if you, you know, you don't want to let down your child. I mean, we all understand that, you know, when you get off work, you don't feel like doing something or you're extremely tired and you had a rough day and, you know, you can even be stressed out through your day. But if you told your son or your daughter that you were going to do something, be intentional about it. Sometimes doing that very thing causes sacrifice. And even for your spouse, you know, if you told your, if you get off work and you told your spouse she was going to do something, be intentional about doing that thing. You know what I mean? I mean, your spouse is a little bit different, but your children um, are going to take that in certain ways other than your spouse would. So remember that. Never say, I don't have time right now. Let them know that I will. Mommy or daddy's busy right now, but I will do it. And be intentional about when you get done, make it a point to get that done. Um, number three, I don't think you can do it. Oh, man, I, I can't remember count how many times I, I've heard that mentioned in my ears. And for me, I've taken that as a, as a, as fuel to, you tell me I can't do something. I'm going to prove to you that I can do it. If you tell me I'm not qualified to do something, I'm going to prove to you that I am qualified to do just that thing that you told me I couldn't do. Now, now what your child hears is, I don't believe in you. When you mention those words, I don't think you can do it. Your child hears, I don't believe in you. Now, knowing you believe in them gives your kids strength, courage, motivation, and tenacity, and a whole lot more. Now, take that belief away, and the damage will be huge. When you're tempted to say thing, say something like this, instead say, you've got some big obstacles, but I'm here for you, cheering you on and ready to help you to do your very best. Those words right there speaks life into your child it speaks life over your son it speaks life over your daughter so no matter what they're going through they know that their mom or dad has their back and i don't mean nobody to amen me i amen myself now number four <laughs> you're such a disappointment that's that's the man that's even worse you're such a disappointment your kids can mess up and they will we messed up when we were kids we all do but if you want your children to learn from their mistakes Address their mess and how it can be fixed without hanging it on them or hanging it over their heads. The label of failure is a heavy load to carry, and most kids won't hold up under that pressure. Try saying this, your grade, your bad grade, or your bad choice, etc. is disappointing, but I love you no matter what. What can we learn from this? How can I help you with this? Now, separate who your child is from the mess they've made. That's an easy way to do that, to reinforce a positive standpoint in their life. Separate your child from the mess that was made, okay? And here's number five. Don't be such a wimp. I've heard that too. Man up, boy, put your, put your big girl panties on or something like that, I've heard. This should never be said to a boy or a girl. But for a boy, it's basically saying you don't have what it takes to be a man and can damage him to the, and it can damage him to the core for quite some very time, some time. Now, saying you throw like a girl to your son can have the same effect. All right. So you got to be careful with that, you know, degrading them to their face or even behind their back that, that they're such a wimp, especially to a son and to a daughter, because, you know, some of us have daughters that that are very active in sports or are very active in certain things. And if you call them a wimp, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to destroy you. Number seven, can't you do anything right? Again, now we're talking about things that you should never say to a kid. 
Can't you do anything right? And now ask yourself, how many times have you heard this in your life and how did it make you feel? Think about that. When a parent says this to a child in the heat of the moment, it's not only saying that the child messed, messed this one thing up, but it also says that they mess up everything else. It's always dangerous to use broad, broad brush words like always, never, everything, and anything. Even when you're talking to your spouse. That's a little side note. That's a freebie. You don't always you don't want to use that. You never do this or you always do that and everything you do is this or anything you do is that. Those words are so damaging. Because if you think about it, it's not oftentimes that when some when a mistake is made that it's every single time. And you gotta keep in mind, we're all human, we all make mistakes. So put yourself in their shoes. Maybe their perception isn't the way your perception is, and they don't see it the way you do. So think about that. Think about how you would feel if someone told you or have told you, you can't do anything right. So number eight, and we're almost done. Why don't you make the starting team? Now look, I have one daughter that's a dancer and she is so awesome at it. That's my oldest, that's Taylor. She is such an awesome dancer. and She is also an awesome artist. And we're trying to encourage her to to take hold of those two things and, and let it marinate inside of her so God can use those abilities, those natural abilities that he's given her to go forth in life. Now, my other two, they're athletes and they're very good. And I, I can't recall, babe, any time I asked them, um, and I'm double checking because sometimes I forget that I asked them, well, why didn't you make the starting team? I don't remember ever saying that. Because those things, again, those type of things, those type of words, your inflections in your voice, it tells your son or your daughter that even though they try, they still aren't good enough. When we try and we fail, it's not a down point for us. When your kids try and they fail, it's not a down point for us. It's really not. What happens is, when we use those words, like, why didn't you make the starting team? Like I said, it makes them feel like they're not good enough for you or anything. And then it puts more pressure on them. Now, your daughter or your son probably tried really hard to make the starting team, but landed on the B squad, and that's okay. It just shows that there are some things that need improvement. So what do you do? You just take a step back and you help them by encouraging them to improve on those things. Number nine, so you made a B plus. Why didn't you get an A? Now, I've heard myself say this sometimes, and I'm like, okay, well, you got to see that's not good enough. You can do better. You can do better because you have done better. That type of encouragement, I, I believe, is okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, somebody comment, you know, in the chat or whatever. If this, if this was live, you'd be able to do that. Um, but those, you know, saying stuff like that, it, to me, it's like an encouragement. It's not saying that you are less of a person because you got to be B plus or you got to see. It's just some things that we need to focus on. We need to refocus. We need to um, change our perception. We need to change our focus and maybe get rid of some extracurricular things in our life or in your life that is hindering you or distracting you from doing what you need to do. Now, when something like this is said, here's what the child hears. Nothing I do is good enough for mom or dad, especially if they did their best. We should praise them if they didn't. We should challenge them to give it everything they've got the next time. All right? So, with that said, that's my spiel. So, I want to end in a word of prayer. And remember, these nine, I'm going I'm to say these nine things again that you should not say ever to your child. Why can't you be more like whoever? I don't have time right now. I don't think you can do it. You're such a disappointment. Don't be such a wimp. Number six. You're a bonehead. You're such a bonehead. I don't think we covered that one, did we? Man, I, I guess I skipped right over that one. I'm sorry. Number six is you're such a bonehead, which you don't, you know, there's things that you can say other than bonehead, but even that derogatory statement towards your child, I mean, it's just telling them that they're stupid.